Well, hello, and thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Meredith DeVillies, and I am a coach here with the EVSC. And today, you're going to get two for one here with this lesson. So we are going to do a little bit of ELA and bring in some social studies as well. So you'll get two lessons in one slot of time. And I know how excited you all are that it's social studies, because that's all of our favorites, no matter what you say. So we're going to work on conducting research. And our topic is going to be the Age of Enlightenment. So some things to think about as we research. So some questions. Why are we researching? And it's usually, I know, because someone told you to. I don't think you're doing it on your own. But let's just pretend that you have this inquisitive mind and that you want to answer a question, right? So that's why we're researching, because we want to answer a question. So what are we researching? Well, today we're going to be researching the Age of Enlightenment. Where are we gathering information? So today we are going to be using some articles from Newzella. We're going to be using some Discovery Ed. How reliable are our sources? So we're not using Wikipedia today. Sometimes Wikipedia, is, it's not like always bad. Sometimes it's OK, but today we're not using that. So we know that our sources are reliable today. And then here's our last question. So what information is relevant and irrelevant? And that's kind of a tricky question, right? Because we'd like to think that all the information in research is relevant, but it may not always be relevant to the question we're trying to answer. So that's how we're going to approach it today. So I want you to get out a sheet of paper. And I want you to look at this picture. So this is, it says, a lecture about a model solar system with a lamp in place of the sun. So you can see that I'd say this guy's probably the one giving the lecture. We have some people that are looking at him, some people that are looking at the model. So what I'd like you to do is I want you to just look at this picture for a second, and then we're going to take a little bit of time for you to think about some possible research questions. Okay, so I'm going to start this timer for 20 seconds, and during that 20 seconds, I just want you to try to brainstorm some possible research questions that we could use today, and just write them on your paper, or not. Okay, so some possible research questions. I just want you to shout them out at me. I have super good hearing. I can hear you. Oh, well, that didn't work. That was a good one. We'll get to those in a second. What's our next one? So what was important in the Age of Enlightenment? Next one I heard was, what was the Age of Enlightenment? I think someone over on the east side yelled, how did the Age of Enlightenment change life? We have, how did the ideas of the Enlightenment begin and grow? And I think that's our last one. So looking at these, right? So one struggle that we sometimes have, although all of these were great, you guys did an excellent job with that. Sometimes with research questions, the answer might be too broad or too narrow. So we want to make sure that we're hitting just that right spot where we have the opportunity to find lots of information, but we also don't want like so much that we can't really answer the question. So we're going to go with, how did the ideas of the Enlightenment begin and grow? So we are going to set up some note-taking sheets here today. So when I do research, I always put my question that I'm trying to answer up at the top of my sheet. That way, as I'm going through my sources, I can better remember, does this information answer my question, or do I just think it's maybe important to know? So we're going to have both of those today, right? So on this sheet, I'm going to have my source. So our first one here is a video. And then I have my citation. So I'll have that later in case you're so interested in this, you want to turn it into a paper. And then I have this. So like I said, we're going to have this side to where the information that we hear or read, if we think it answers this question, how did the ideas of the Enlightenment begin and grow, we're going to put it on this side. 
if we read something and we think, well, that seems important, that might be good for an intro or just added information, we're going to put it on the other side. So with that being said, I'll give you a second to get your sheet set up and then we'll look at our first source. So our first source is going to be this short little video and this is from Discovery Ed, so from our tech book. I'm struggling with that play today. The Enlightenment, also known as the Age of Reason, is the name given to an important period in the history of Western civilization that followed the Renaissance. The Enlightenment occurred roughly from the mid-1600s up through the end of the 1700s and was a time when the human ability to reason was glorified. The word enlightenment means a time of illumination. The era was given this name because it was a time when an influential group of scholars, writers, artists, and scientists actively sought to use the clear light of reason, that is rational thought, to rid the world of superstition and ignorance. As a result of their efforts, tremendous improvements in the understanding of mathematics and science occurred, and bold new ideas regarding basic human rights and democracy were developed that served as major inspirations to revolutionaries in both America and France. Okay, so raise your hand if while you're watching this video, you were trying to take down notes, but maybe you thought they talked a little fast. I know I did. All truth here. When I was making these slides for you today, I watched this video more than once, okay? And sometimes you have to do that when you're doing research. Maybe you have to read it more than once. Maybe you have to watch it more than once. Maybe you have to pause it, rewind it, all of that jazz. So, some information that I've pulled out <coughs> is that, so the first part I put under that might answer my question, right? So that influential group of scholars, writers, artists, so on, really tried to focus on the use of rational thought. So I think that kind of tells me how it started, right? Some other things that I thought might be important to know is that it's the time after the Renaissance, that it promoted people's ability to reason, and enlightenment means time of illumination. Some other things that you might have added is that it's also known as the age of reason. Maybe you had that it lasted from the mid-1600s to the end of the 1700s. All of those would be great points to put as well. And then we we're going to watch that again, but we got that. So, any other? Oh, another idea you might have added is that... Um, the Enlightenment introduced new ideas about human rights. And that it also introduced new ideas about democracy. So this is going to kind of tell us how it spread, right? So the more people learn about these things, maybe they're telling each other, and that helps us get to the, how it grew. And the last one here is that it was a major inspiration in both America and France. So once again, this is telling us how it grew, right? If it started in Europe and it's going to other places in Europe, like France, and it's going across the ocean to America, clearly it's growing there. So now we're going to look at a New Zella article. So once again, I still have my question there. I have my source written. I have my citation. And I have my two sections. Now, obviously, we are not going to read the entire article, right? I would love for you to read the entire article, but for the purpose of these slides, I didn't think you'd be able to see that little of print. So I'm going to give you just a second, probably more than one second, to read this to yourself, and then we'll talk about some of the notes that can be pulled from it.
Okay. So one thing that I thought was kind of important to make note of here is that the Enlightenment led to many books, essays, inventions, scientific discoveries, laws, and even wars. For example, the American Revolution was based in part on Enlightenment ideas. I felt like that really tells us how it grew, right? So this doesn't necessarily lead to the how it started, but it tells us how it continued to grow. So I put that on the side of my notes where I would be answering my question. Some other things, maybe, nope. Um, let's go back here. So maybe you had other things in your notes, right? So maybe you found some information that would go on that side, and that's okay too. So the next part of this article, so we're still under the same source here. Oh, there was some other ideas, sorry. So some other things would be that Locke was a thinker from Britain. He wrote about his ideas. Newton spread new ideas in math and science, both telling us how they grew. So Locke believed that human nature could be changed. That seems important. I don't know if it helps answer my question, so I'm going to put it on this side. Thought knowledge could be gained from experience. And it could be that later, as I'm continuing my research, Maybe I feel like that does belong under the section that helps answer my question. Maybe that's how it grew, because people liked that idea. So now our next part of the article. I'll give you a chance to read that, and then we'll add to our notes. Okay, I'll let you read this and then we'll just add it all to our notes at one time. So some of the things that you might have added to your notes here. So that Enlightenment thought it was important to share ideas. That Enlightenment thinkers thought everyone could think for themselves. Many authors wrote down knowledge they had. So one thing... Let's go back here. We want to go here really fast. So one thing that I did not, that's not where I wanted to go, right here. One thing that I did not put in these notes, but as I was reading it again, I think I would have added, is the fact that the books that they wrote covered everything from how shoes were made to science. Like I'm thinking if I lived in this time period, which I didn't, I'm not that old, if I lived in that time period and I'm reading a book about how shoes were made, like that's something practical, right? Like I might want to learn more about this. Those are things, ideas that I might want to share and more people might catch on to the same way of thinking when it's practical like that. So rather than us have to go through all those again, let's go. So get your next section set up there. So our third source is going to be our Discovery Ed tech book and the section from the Enlightenment. So I'll give you some time to read here.
So a couple things before we start taking down some notes on this. So remember in our original questions, we talked about if sources are reliable. So one way to know if they're reliable is if they have similar information to maybe you've seen in another source, right? So in that first video, it also told us that the Enlightenment was known as the age of, was known as the age of reason. So that gives us some um, to base this off. It also told us that that's when it took place. Um, it told us that it was during the scientific revolution and after the Renaissance. So the fact that we're seeing those same facts in more than one place lets us know that they're reliable and that these sources are reliable. So some of the facts that we might have added here, that it was based on the ideas of other movements, that the philosophy of humanism became popular. Now I put stars there because when I go back and look at my notes later, I may think that that doesn't help answer my question. I wasn't really sure, so I put a star by it that humanism ideas influenced the arts, science, and politics, because I feel like that's helping us know how it grew, if it's influencing other areas. The practice of studying the Greeks carried over to the Enlightenment. Not sure if it answers my question, but it seems important to know. Idea that the people should rule the government influenced many Enlightenment thinkers. Okay, so that's the end of our notes. You might have had some other notes in there, which is great. I hope that you did. But now we're going to do just something a little bit different. So I did tell you that this was social studies as well, right? So this next step that we're going to do is kind of a combination, right? So it's, gonna, it's a type of note taking that comes from our Discovery Ed tech book. But in this case, after your research, if you did, which in most cases you're researching because your teacher told you to, and you're going to have to turn it into a paper or a presentation, a way to jazz that up a little bit, which I know is a cool word all you kids are using is jazz, is use this. So what we're going to do is I want you to think of an adjective. So that's our A, right? So down your paper you're going to write A-E-I-O-U, our vowels. So our A is our adjective. So I want you to write one word, one describing word, to describe the age of enlightenment. And you can't use enlightening or reasonable, okay? You gotta think a little bit more creative than that. So you're gonna choose one word that you think describes the age of enlightenment, and I want you to give me just a brief little reason as to why you put that. The next one we're gonna do is your E, emotion, that you felt while learning more about this. And you can't put bored because we all know you had a great time with this lesson. So maybe for me, and you can steal this if you need to, some of it as I was reading it, I felt kind of confused, right? I feel like they weren't already using reason to understand how things happened. They didn't know you could learn things by doing it. I was a little confused. Our next one would be I for interesting. So what was the most interesting fact that you wrote down today? Oh, it's going to be your, oh, it surprised you. Something that you just had no idea about today. And then the U is going to be uh, something that you still have a question about or that you need more clarification on. So as I said, this is one way to organize notes like when you're in social studies or science and learning more about one of those subjects. But also, after your research, it's a good way to organize your thoughts so that you have some adjectives ready to go when you have to turn this research into a presentation or paper. Even though we you know we don't use our word you wouldn't say, I thought such and such was confusing. You might say, sometimes the topic of the Age of Enlightenment could be seen as confusing, right? Because we don't use our, our personal pronouns when we do research. But these are great ways for you to already have your information kind of organized and ready to insert to make your 
presentation or your paper just a little more interesting. So, I want you to look back over that information from today and let's see if you can't write a sentence or two to answer our research question. So just based on what we have so far. So I want you to look over that and jot down an answer. So take about 10 more seconds. So I would say, so write a sentence or two answering our research question based on the research we have done so far. So I would say based on the information we gathered today, I might say um, the Enlightenment started after the Renaissance when some of the ideas from that period were carried over. The Age of Reason and Enlightenment continued to grow as those ideas influenced the arts and sciences. So that is not a super wordy, crazy answer, right? It's just based off what we learned today. But what that's also going to tell us by trying to do that is telling us what we still need to know, what parts of our question still need to be beefed up or answered. So one thing that we might want to look for, right, is who are some of those people that started the Enlightenment age? Um, what were the main ideas from the Renaissance that got carried over and how did they change during this time period? How long and how far did these ideas reach and go? Are we still seeing part of them today? Stuff like that. So you may not always be able to answer all of that as you're continuing your research, but it's just always great when you're researching, when you're trying to answer a question is know what you're trying to answer, right? So that's just going to help us with that. So the last thing that we are going to do is we're going back to those original questions to see how we did on our research today. So why are we researching? So obviously today we are researching because we've heard some pretty crazy great things about this period we call the Age of Enlightenment and we want to know more about it, right? I know I did. And we have what are we researching, so we know that already, right? We're answering our question about the Age of Enlightenment, so that's what we're researching. Where are we gathering information? So we used Newzella and Discovery Ed today. How reliable are our sources? So we already knew that those were pretty reliable, but that was kind of confirmed, right, whenever we saw some similar information in more than one source. And then what information is relevant and irrelevant? So we took care of that today by making sure that we had our note taking sheet set up for us to differentiate as we were taking our notes as to what information was relevant to our question and what might not be so relevant to our question. So I think we get to put, oh, look at that. So if you're wanting to, oh, we got check marks too. So I forgot to click through there. So we have that and we get a check mark there. I do love a check mark. We have our sources check. We know that our sources were reliable, we talked about that, and we know how they are relevant and irrelevant. So, um, with that, I appreciate you joining me for this so exciting lesson about the Age of Enlightenment and letting me throw in some ELA for you too. And in order for you to get credit for joining me today, your code word is gonna be research. Thanks, have a great day.